Yo what's up guys welcome to my humble youtube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. The Journey of the Katana Hero by the Trinity 9 Chapter 11 The God Judgment now Fumi swirled the wine in his glass with a scowl. I can't believe they forced me to wear this stupid outfit. I mean come on. This looks ridiculous. The ensemble looked like a fusion of punk rock band mixed with Mountain Hermit. He shook his head and the bones of the headdress rattled. The headdress, if it could even be considered one, was nothing more than the skull of some carnivorous animal. Ah! Uh, I wonder how old this thing even is. My lord! How are you enjoying the festivities? Werner approached with a glass of wine in his hand and a smile on his face. He was dressed in royal attire with a few medals and a lot of feathers adorning the shoulders. Now Fumi shrugged. It would be a lot better if I didn't have people saying, my lord this, and, my lord that, it's honestly exhausting. He said exaggeratedly. The Shusaku chuckled, but a thin bead of sweat could be seen on his temple. I hope I'm not adding to your troubles, then. Not really. Was there something you needed? Werner looked around before leaning a bit closer. You've been awfully isolated here this whole time. Is something not to your liking? If so, we could always change. The hero shook his head. Don't worry about it. I'm just. Not a big party person. It was the truth, after all. Now Fumi didn't want to play dress up and stand around talking about how great his own accomplishments were to impress people. He'd rather be relaxing with his party members, especially with his girlfriend. Speaking of which, I wonder the progress of the missing ache. Now Fumi asked the Shusaku, who looked troubled. Lady Arashi also asked same question to me, but, my apologize, my lord. Our special forces still cannot find him, but we will do our best to keep search his whereabouts. You better be. He's Rimuru first companion and I assure you, you don't want to be on her bad side. Now Fumi told him, who nervously nodded. Now I wonder where my companion's at. I'm used to being able to spot them anywhere in Melromark, since they were some of the only people with tails or wings. It's a lot more difficult here. The winged man chuckled, fluffing his own wings out proudly. Well I could help you find them, if you like. They're actually quite unique compared to the rest of us. Now come. Let us find your friends so you can enjoy the celebration like the rest of us. Now Fumi raised an eyebrow as he followed the red-haired man. What makes them unique? Werner took a sip of his wine as he pondered the question. Hmm. Well for one thing, the young Philalil girl has wings unlike ours. Our wings typically start lighter in color directly after birth, and darken as we age. I've never seen a Shusaku with white wings outside of infancy, so she isn't very hard for me to spot. The wolf however, is very unique. Mostly Tempest Star Wolf only had one horn, but yours has two. And Raftalia? She is. A bit more complex. At first, I believed her to be a raccoon-type demi-human. But her hair color and appearance don't match their race in the slightest. Raccoons typically don't share very many human-like features, and even fewer possess the distinct beauty that Miss Raftalia has. Werner sighed. I must admit I feel ashamed that I still don't know exactly what she is. He hummed in thought, and to think, not long ago she was a ten-year-old child. Werner fixed him with a curious gaze as he stopped in his tracks. Did you say, ten years old? He asked in shock. Yeah, why? The man shook his head. Nothing to be concerned about, my lord. It's just. Demi humans generally only grow to their teenage years from leveling up. Miss Raftalia appears. Older than that, if it's possible. By human standards, she looks to be the same age as yourself. Now Fumi put a hand to his chin. If she's so unique that other demi humans have no idea what her race is, who the hell were her parents? What kind of secrets were they hiding, especially if they never told her? Speaking of Lady Arashi, she's a human, right? Werner asked, promoted now Fumi to back from his thoughts. Yeah I'm sure she's a human. Why? It just. I've never seen either human or demi-human who possess a beauty like Lady Arashi had. Not even Miss Raftalia can match her. Most of our people believe she's a goddess who descended from heaven. Not to mention she had a pair of bat wings on her back. You're not the only one who say that. Now Fumi responded. She hated when people call her that. But I can't blame her though. As for her wings, it was one of her special ability. 
I see. Ah, there she is. Werner pointed toward the small crowd. Rimuru was surrounded by demi humans of all type, Philo and Ranga filling their bellies with food, the portion is the astronomical one. Raftalia talked with some of demi humans. Raftalia wears an purple dress that fit her perfectly. Rimuru, however, now Fumi can't describe her clothes at all. But one thing for sure, the deity aura she emitted when wear that clothes is extremely strong, she really looked like a goddess. There you are, Rimuru. I've been looking for you. Ah, now Fumi. I was wondering where you disappeared after the opening prayer. Well, I didn't want to make some speech, but I also want to get out from this outfit as soon as possible. I can see that. It definitely has a charm to it, but I prefer your usual outfit over this. Me too. I feel more comfortable in my armor than this stuffy, furry get up too. The demi humans nearby watched in awe. This two deities just casually talks in front of them. They are not worthy to get such an opportunity. Suddenly, the music slowed down. The curtains were drawn to darken the room, and tables were moved to the sides. Little by little, pairs of people made their way to the center of the castle ballroom to dance. Nearly all of them moved with refined grace, gliding across the floor like ghosts. Um. Now Fumi, I asked hesitantly, what it is, is something wrong? I shook my head. No, it just, you want to dance with me? You want to dance with me? Now Fumi gave me an incredulous look. Listen, I don't judge, but I'm the last person you want to dance with. I'm sure it's not that bad, I told him. Still, I'd be a terrible dance partner. I don't have a single clue how to dance, so it wouldn't be any fun for either of us. Now Fumi applauded himself for his quick thinking, but halted his self praise when he saw the pout on my face. Now Fumi, I just want to dance with you. Just one song, please? I give him my best sweet smile. Now Fumi just sighed in defeat. Fine, fine, I'll go. But just one song, okay. I really don't know how to dance. I saw now Fumi blush. He seems afraid to mess it up, huh? How cute. Werner suddenly chimed in. My lord, it, ah, uh, good timing. Here, hold this. Now Fumi cut the Shusaku off, handing him the gaudy headdress. Ignoring the stupefied councilman, he fought the blush that invaded his cheeks and held out his hand. Rimuru Rashi, may I have this dance? My heart want to explode in happiness at this moment. I never have a chance to dance with Raiden or Hosen, so this is my first time. Yes you may, now Fumi Iwatani. I took his hand as he gently led me toward the dance floor. As if sensing a new arrival, the dancers all managed to move themselves out of the way so they had space to maneuver. Now Fumi tried to look at the other pairs for tips on what to do. Uh. So how is this supposed to go? Nobody else is even doing the same thing, so I can't even watch and learn. He said, obvious discomfort written on his face. I gulped. W well, I watched a dance scene on movie and the first thing to do is you put one hand on my hip and hold my other hand. I said. He did as he was told, letting his hand sit at my hip. Though he tried his best to ignore my perfect hourglass figure, it was simply not possible. Okay. Now what? Now Fumi found it a bit difficult to look at me directly in the eyes. Something about the environment was making him feel strange, and being this physically close to me wasn't helping. We could start by just swaying back and forth to the music, if you want. My face burned in embarrassment. Sure, I guess that doesn't sound too hard. He gently swayed back and forth, and I lost in this moment. Between the dim lighting and the soft music, this was everything that fairy tale story need in the ending. I wondered if Raiden and Hosen saw me right now, Raiden would feel so jealous. My mood instantly becomes sour at the thought, and now Fumi picked up on it. You're thinking something sad, aren't you? Yes. I was thinking about Raiden and my other best friend, Hosen. Back on my world, we often hang out together. I also aware how Raiden feels towards me and Hosen give us a full support at it. I just thought how jealous he would be if he saw me dance with you right now. Now Fumi raised his eyebrow. You really miss them, aren't you? Yes. I nodded. Not only them, but my parents too. I really miss them. I'm sorry for your loss. There's nothing you could have done, now Fumi. You had no idea who I was back then, I said before let out a small smile. Beside, I have you, Raftalia, Ake, Philo and Ranga now. You're like a family to me. Now Fumi chuckled. Well, 
You get lonely pretty easily, don't you? Can you tell? I slid my hand down his shoulder and onto his chest. I moved closer to him and laid my head against him. Rimuru? He asked, slightly surprised. I shook my head. You're right. I get lonely really easily, and I like having someone to spoil me. I told him with blush on my cheeks. I want you to spoil me more. He looked away from her, trying his best to ignore his quickening heartbeat. As Naofumi looked down to see her head is still on his chest, he lost in thought. This is like something out of a romance manga or novel. And for some reason, that's better than I thought it would. He wrapped his arms around her and starting to pat her head. I gasped in surprise as my cheeks going hotter in each seconds. However, I didn't stop him because I enjoying this, and probably him too. Something in both of them melted, and they knew that no matter how hard they tried to resist it, it couldn't be avoided. Letting their heart takes the wheel, now Fumi lifted Rimuru's head and mashed his lips against hers. Rimuru gasped in surprise but did not reject it. Her cheeks was completely red but she's enjoying this so much. The couple separate their lips to catch a breath, as they want to do that again. My lord, I hope I'm not interrupting anything too important. They were interrupted by Werner, who approached quietly and tapped the hero on the shoulder. Annoyed that the moment was ruined, now Fumi turned his head with an annoyed glare. What? He asked. The celebration is going to end after the next two songs, but the council wishes to have a meeting with you in private after it's over to go over our next steps. The winged man tried to hand the bone headdress back to him, but now Fumi pushed it away. Fine, but just know that I'm not in a cooperative mood, he said, turning back to me. Come on, Rimuru. Let's go to our companions and get a bite to eat. Oh okay, now Fumi. I said while my mind was utter chaos. He's kissing me, now Fumi, kissing, me. The rest of the celebration passed with Lil Fanfare. Nobles filed out of the ballroom either one by one or in pairs, drunk and happy to be alive. It could be noted that very few of the people in that ballroom actually participated in the battle, but there were simply far too many to know for sure. We were led by Werner to a terrace where the rest of the council was. Here we are, my lord. All of you, please take a seat. This meeting will not take long, but it is important that we make a plan of action for the near future. So what kind of plan do you need me for? If you remember the last time I was here, you basically told me you owned me and I had to deal with it. Don't forget that you still owed me the second agreements. Now Fumi said while crossing his arms. We merely wanted you to understand how critical your position is for our people, my lord. One of the councilmen said with a grunt. I would personally like to thank you for not causing a scene during the celebration, however. I know the ceremonial outfit is dated in style, but it has a cultural significance for us. Yes, your cooperation was most appreciated, one of the council said with a smile. As for Sir Ake whereabouts, we must apologize that we can't still find him anywhere. That was very unexpected answer, I said sarcastically. A group of maids entered before placing a single cup in front of each person there. Another group entered with wine, pouring a hefty amount into each cup. A single maid poured some kind of fruit juice into Philo and Ranga's cup, which I was thankful for. The last thing we needed was a drunk Philo and Ranga. Hopefully we'd never have to learn just how dangerous a drunk, spastic little philolial girl and drunk, big, stormy tempest star wolf could be. I just wanted it to be over, if I'm being honest. Now let's take care of this so I can get some sleep. It's getting late. Now Fumi looked exhausted, and I also had little energy to scold him. My head shot up as my status magic pinged a notification with a red exclamation point. When I looked down at his cup of wine, it was clearly labeled as poisoned. I looked to my companions. Now Fumi and Raftalia's was poisoned as well. Oddly enough, whoever had it out for them left Philo and Ranga's cup untouched. Now Fumi looked at me and nodded. Seems he also got the notification. He looked at Raftalia and when she looked at him back, now Fumi shook his head. She seemed to understand, or at least he hoped she did. Of course, my lord. Let us begin by congratulating you on an amazing performance during the wave. Your strength and willpower brought us victory over a powerful foe, and kept our great country safe, Gerolus said. This victory will surely raise the morale of our troops, especially since a wave will take longer to occur in this area, another said. It'll take longer? I asked curiously. Werner nodded. Yes. In areas where a hero participates in a wave, 
it increases the amount of time between them in that respective area. Now Fumi hummed in thought. Now that you mention it, the timer for the wave has over 40 days until the next one. An old man who looked like a turtle wheezed out a chuckle. So you finally understand your worth, E.H. Now you know why you were summoned. And you're a smart one, so I'm sure you realize why the old wise king tried to keep you there. You're in the presence of the shield hero, Genmu. How dare you stay in that form? One of the councilmen roared. Oh, he he, my apologies. I'm just so used to staying in this form to protect myself that I completely forgot. One moment. In a puff of smoke, the turtle man transformed into his demi human form. He now looked like any other old man, using a cane to walk. Because he would have fewer waves to deal with if I stayed? Now Fumi asked, frustration building by the second. And yet he'd treat me like garbage on a moment's notice. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm lucky that Motoyasu challenged me to that duel. Otherwise, I would have been forced to escape Melromark as a fugitive. Raftalia's sweat dropped. That was quite a convenient turn of events, even though that wasn't his plan at all. If he's so gullible, I'm sure I could use that to our advantage, especially at how he obsessed with me. I'm sure you will do anything for me, I responded. Rimuru sama, you shouldn't be so proud of manipulating people. Now then, let us all come together with a prayer, Werner said. All of the councilmen clasped their hands together and began to pray. May all be as our Lord the Shield wills it. We are thankful for this wine that nourishes our mortal bodies. May it give us the strength to carry out the wishes of our Lord, the protector of this world. They all raised their cups. May it give us strength. Now Fumi nearly fell out of his seat. It was so awkward being openly worshipped that he felt like cringing. I didn't blame him though. It's like how people called me a goddess. He put the cup up to his lips and allowed some wine to pour into his mouth, but didn't swallow it. Now who's responsible for this poison? Time to find out. All of the council members had drunk their own cup of wine, with some guzzling it down like savages. He wasn't sure whether their wine was poisoned as well, but now Fumi saw Gerilus looking far too smug to be innocent. Now Fumi gave a smirk of his own before spitting the wine back into the cup. W.H. He stood up, much to everyone's, well, except me, surprise. So, all of you just prayed to your Lord the Shield. Then, as your Shield hero, I order each and every one of you to drink the wine that was given to me and my companions, immediately. Praying on their faith to expose the culprit, huh? Good one, now Fumi. I thought with a smirk. Um. As you wish. Werner said with a confused look. He and several other council members did as they were told but there were a few who did not. Now Fumi slammed his hands on the table. Now then, who wants to tell me why the wine we were given was poisoned? The council, along with Raftalia, were shocked. Philo and Ranga for whatever reason, seemed unsurprised. What, poisoned? One of the councilmen exclaimed in shock. But who would do such a thing? Now Fumi pulled a few vials of antidote out of his inventory, tossing them to those who had drank the wine. I don't know how fast acting that poison is, so I suggest you to drink this antidote. Internally, he sighed in relief that he had a foresight to make a few antidotes. After the cautions with Three Heroes Church and the scare with Zombie Dragon, the last thing he needed was to have someone with an incurable condition that could be life threatening. I looked at Werner, who had horrified expression. Apparently, you weren't involved with this. The winged man looked at the exposed members in shock. Absolutely not. What were you all thinking? The guilty members clenched their fists in frustration that their plan had failed. I'm disgusted by all of you. Execute them at once, he shouted. I had no intention of getting in your way, and you still saw fit to try and poison not only me, but my girlfriend and my companions as well. Now Fumi crossed his arms and adopted the most scathing glare he could muster. You all had better have one damn good reason why I shouldn't let you die, especially you. Now Fumi pointing toward the lion therianthrope at the other end of the table. Gerilus looked appalled. Me, my lord, surely you jest. To think I'd turn against you so easily is ridiculous. Preposterous, even. Oh yeah, then why didn't you drink the wine like I ordered you to? Unless you'd like the honor of being fed the wine by your, lord the shield. What do you say? I've heard that some would kill for such an opportunity. I scoffed. Some of the council members flinched at the threat. Raftalia would have facepalmed if the situation weren't so serious. That's so evil, 
Now Fumi Sama. Praying on their faith like that is so. Like Rimuru Sama. The lion scoffed. I simply had my fill at the celebration, and had no desire to drink more. That is all. That's bullshit and we all know it. Now Fumi's glare intensified. Gerilus, you bastard. I can't believe you'd pull something like this. Werner yelled. I knew you had ambition, but this is treason. This is heresy. Heresy. All I did was confirm what we were all worried about. Gerilus said, smirk returning to his face. I wasn't the only one who was concerned. I was just the one willing to do whatever it takes to know the truth. Truth. What kind of truth is worth our lives? I asked as I draw my katana just in case someone tried something. Gerilus shook his head. Why? The truth of his identity of course. He stroked the fur on his chin. The whole council had doubts of whether or not you were the true shield hero, you know. Werner slammed a fist on the table, knocking his own cup of wine over. I can't believe you would go so far. And for what? How can we expect our own god to trust us after something like this? Because I had to know the truth, Werner. He has given us all multiple reasons to suspect him as a traitor. First, he had companion from Melromark. We all know that shield heroes are never has companion from Melromark and yet this man is not held to the same standard. Second, he has absolutely no desire to stay in a country founded by his predecessor and no love for our people. Lastly, he has openly admitted his plans to return to the country of our mortal enemy. Such a man could only be an imposter. A failure of a hero. So you are the culprit. I muttered with anger. The Shusaku grit his teeth. Gerilus, those aren't the words of a patriot. They're the words of a madman. I am no madman. I will not stand idly by as this rebellious hero drives our great nation into the ground. Our people will rebel against him if we allow him to do as he pleases. Enough. Now Fumi shouted, silencing them. I don't care about some internal power struggle. I'm not here to be your god. I'm here to save the world. And if you all won't help me do it, then I have no reason to come back. Gerilus huffed. Then might I propose a compromise, of sorts. Now Fumi rolled his eyes. Nothing you say holds much weight any longer, but go ahead. Gerilus held up a finger. First, our people rely heavily on their faith for guidance and security. To prevent that from being compromised, it would be expected that you act as the shield hero on behalf of Siltbelt. He said with a confident smirk. You would not act on behalf of our enemy, Melromark, but as Siltbelt's hero, and Siltbelt's hero alone. Are you sure you aren't mad? The waves are happening all around the world right now, and you're so selfish that you'd only let Naofumi stay here. I said with a raised eyebrow. Also, I know you are the culprit behind Ake's disappearance. Where is he? He held up a second finger. Don't be naive, Katana hero. Do you really think Siltbelt would let Melromacy and Scum become our hero companions? And you think Silvert will lend its hero to other countries? It goes without saying that leaving the country without permission would be inexcusable. Werner shook his head. First you kidnapped our lord companions and now you gave him these absurd conditions. Our lord would be a fool to accept them in this position. The lion Therianthrope ignored him, holding up a third finger. Furthermore, you would be expected to take a wife from each tribe and produce an heir with each. Only with these three conditions would you truly be fulfilling the bare minimum as your role of the shield hero. You bastard. First you kidnapped my first companion, and now you want to turn my boyfriend into a political prisoner and breeding horse. You will pay for this. My katana slowly turned into the greedy one as dark aura start to surrounding my body, which make most everyone shivering in fear. But before I do something regretful, now Fumi and Raftalia held my back. Calm down, Rimuru. You don't have to get mad on my account. He said calmly. Now Fumi Sama is right, Rimuru Sama. Just let him finish this alone. Raftalia added. I take a deep breath as the greedy one turned back into Tempest Katana. But aren't you angry, Naofumi? He has insulted you. He chuckled, a flicker of dark flame passing his vision for a moment before vanishing without a trace. Oh trust me, I'm angry enough for all of us. He swiped a hand toward the councilmen who were innocent. Get rid of him. I don't care how, just get this thing out of my sight. And if he resists, I'll be more than happy to send him to Melromark in pieces. Maybe the trash king would get a laugh out of it. Right away. My lord. 
Guards. Apprehend the traitors and send them for level reset and execution immediately. Werner shouted. A group of warriors clad in shining armor stepped out onto the terrace before grabbing each guilty council member in an iron grip. Several were required to keep Gerolus restrained, but they managed to do so. You're all making a mistake, you fools. Silkbelt will wither and die under his rule. He is no hero of ours. He is not the hero of prophecy we've been waiting for. Gerolus yelled in protest as the guards began dragging him away. On the way out, a vial fell from his pockets and shattered on the floor. Now Fumi walked over and inspected the dark liquid carefully, what exactly is this? My status magic isn't identifying it as a poison or a potion. The old Genmu walked over and did the same. Hmm. I may be wrong, but this appears to be some kind of enhancement drug. Though its potency and purpose elude me, I'm afraid. Well, hopefully it isn't some kind of underground issue. If I were you, I'd get someone on that right away before it becomes troublesome. Now Fumi said. Now. My lord, please forgive us for what happened here today. Werner along with the rest of the councilmen, all dropped to their knees and prostrated themselves before him. The Genmu settled for bowing his head. It was never our intention to threaten the safety of you or your companions. I had no idea that Gerolus would go so far for his own ambitions. Now Fumi still felt traces of rage in the back of his head, but he shook them away. At least he didn't get away with it. I may not want to be stuck in this place, but I don't want it burned to the ground or anything. First. Please allow us to compensate you in any way we can. We'll do anything you ask. A councilman said. To be betrayed by your own country is despicable. I will personally accept any punishment you wish to give us. I will as well. Please. Yes. Please let us atone. Now Fumi groaned and pinched the bridge of his nose. Listen. I'm not here to make all of you into my slaves or anything. I just want to have the freedom to come and go if I need to and to not get chased down by knights everywhere I go. If you can promise me that, then I'll stop by and help with the waves when I can. Also, is this castle has some underground room for prisoner? Because I'm sure that bastard is keeping ache there. I asked with a frown. Werner's face lit up. Why yes, Lady Arashi. Let me guide you to there. Thank you. Let's go everyone. We can't let ache to wait any longer. V. Here we are, my lord. After heading down to the dungeon under the castle, we were brought to the prison cell, seeing none other than Ake being chained up to the wall. He glanced over, noticing our presence before his eyes widened as tears running down his cheeks. With keys to detach him from the wall as well to detach the handcuffs and the chains, I release him from his bound. As he want to falling down, Raftalia quickly catch him. I knew it. I knew you'll found me here. Ake muttered softly. Sorry, Mr. Ake. Raftalia give him a hug. Sorry for making you wait for so long here. We really have no idea what happened to you. Yeah, I'm sorry Ake. I apologized with a guilty tone. You are my first companion, and yet I can't protect you for being kidnapped. It's not your fault, Lady Rimuru. Ake reassured me. I notice he has red tint on his cheeks. Probably because Raftalia still hugging him. I'm the one who careless. Also, this happened unexpectedly to think they will go that far. All right, we can discuss it later. Raftalia, please stop hug Ake so I can heal him. Now Fumi said with a smirk as Raftalia finally release him, a red tint appeared on her cheeks. Now Fumi give him energy boost potion and cast, first heal, to heal him. After rescuing Ake, we go to the bedroom. After the whole fiasco, I even felt more exhausted than before, especially during the opening prayer. When I appeared beside now Fumi, a whole party attendants yelled, a goddess have blessed us with her presence. We aren't worthy, come on, I get it I'm beautiful but please stop with this, goddess, thing. It's annoying as hell. Ugh, what a day. Now Fumi groaned, ripping the headdress and dropping it off the side of the bed. I second that, I sighed as I dropped myself onto the bed. So many things happen in one day, and I thought this place will be better than Melromark. This was indeed eventful day, Raftalia said with a concerned smile. But at least we can solve all the problems we had and found Mr. Ake. I just hope the rest of our time here is a bit more relaxed from now on. You can say that again. This was indeed, she repeated. Smartass. We shared a laugh. I learned it from you too. 
we feel asleep relative quickly. As always, I sleep with Raftalia while Naofumi sleep with Ake. My sleep is the peaceful one. After all the ruckus and the bastard attempts to turn Naofumi into breeding horse, I'm sure need a good rest, physically and mentally. I awoke feeling groggy. It wasn't that I slept poorly, it just my body didn't want to move. Raftalia, Ake and Naofumi had actually awoken before me and snuck out, probably want to grab a breakfast. Good thing Ake go with them. I don't want him to get kidnapped for the second time. After a while I get up and stretched. For some reason, it always helped me wake up when I had to. The morning sun warmed the room considerably, and it was hot enough so I decide to kept on my blue sleeveless shirt and white long pants. Philo and Ranga still asleep peacefully. 30, 31, 32, 33. I counted as I did my crunches. 34, 35. The door gently opened, revealing Naofumi, Raftalia and Ake who carry a plate of foods and drinks. I noticed Naofumi and Ake has a blush on their faces. Good morning, Rimuru-sama. Oh, um, Rimuru. I didn't know you were awake. M morning, Lady Rimuru. They greeted me as I stopped my crunch, greeted them back. Good morning, you three. I had a feeling you went to get yourselves a breakfast. I hope I didn't keep you waiting for long. I said, standing up and wiping the tiny bit of sweat with my towel that I always borrow on my inventory. Now Fumi gulped, as well as ache. Control yourself, now Fumi. You already took things too far with the dancing and kissing her. He shook his head. Oh no. Don't think anything weird, ache. Lady Rimuru is Sir Naofumi's girlfriend. Don't think anything weird, he thought. Uh. Dot you too. You still in there. I snapped my fingers in front of their faces. Geez, welcome back to reality, Naofumi, ache. I'm sure they are stunned because of your beauty, Rimuru-sama. Raftalia chuckled. I get that a lot. I sighed. Listen, this better not be contagious. I. Hope so, Lady Rimuru. I'll do my best. They responded at the same time. As we woke Philo and Ranga from their slumber and prepared to leave, a knock came from their door. My lord, our maids tell me that you're awake. It was Werner, and he sounded even happier than usual. Yeah, what's up? Now Fumi asked, opening the door. The Shusaku smiled, handing some kind of black red egg with him. It looked like a dragon egg, although the egg has some crack on its shell. I believe you want to have another companions with you. This is a dragon egg, which one of the strongest creatures. But, it has some damage on the egg. But still, it will be a great help for you, my lord. He said further. Boo. Philo don't want a stinky dragon go near Philo. Philo pouted. We all sweat dropped at her complain. Well, Philoleal and dragon hate each other guts. So it's an understandment. We'll keep it. Thanks. And one more thing, Werner said, looking at Raftalia. If my information is correct, you're from Larolona, aren't you? Larolona, where's that? I asked. I knew that her village was destroyed, but I never knew its name until now. Yeah, it's located in Melromark, but technically it's a demi-human village. Or at least, it was. But yeah, that was my home, once. Raftalia said with a frown. The Shusaku handed her a small box. I have a friend in Melromark who is friendly to demi-humans. He believes some villagers from Larolona were seen being taken to the Rabier territory, presumably as slaves. If you just so happen to be passing through the area, would you mind delivering this to him? Raptalia grit her teeth at the name, and I noticed that. Her memories of him were definitely not good ones, so having her friends in his possession surely did not bode well for their survival. I instantly assume that this rabier guy is the devil who torture her when she's still a slave. We'll make it our top priority. Raftalia looked up at him in surprise. When he gave her a nod, Raftalia smiled in appreciation. Now what's the name of this friend of yours? His name is Van Reichnot, and he's the governor of the Reichnot territory. Werner answered. So he's a noble. We haven't had many good experiences with nobles, you know. I responded. The Shusaku sweat dropped. I assure you that he is much different from any other Melromarsian nobility. I wouldn't be on good terms with him if he wasn't. This letter is requesting official permission for you to investigate Idol Rabier's territory in search of slaves from Larolona village. If our scout's information is to be trusted, and it usually can be, 
those villagers were sold into slavery when they were meant to be protected. That was part of our agreement with Melromark's queen, after all. So the queen agreed to a demi-human village in her country that practices human supremacy. That seems odd. Now Fumi wondered aloud. Werner shook his head. From my limited interactions with her, I can say that the queen is much more cooperative than her husband. I'll believe that when I see it. Don't worry about that, Sir Naofumi, Lady Rimuru. The queen is definitely kinder than the king. She's not has a deep hate at demi-humans like most of the nobles and royalty. Ake reassured us. Even so, if you should meet her, be careful. Werner warned. Though she may be kinder than the wise king, you should never underestimate her. She isn't called the Vixen of Melromark, for nothing. Vixen of Melromark, I wondered. Indeed, she's quite the shrewd businesswoman and politician who seems to always get her way. Then we'll get along easily, after all. After being escorted to our carriage, and given an incredible amount of supplies to take with us, we began their journey back toward Melromark. A small group of shadows were ordered to escort us back to the border, but wouldn't intervene unless we were in danger. Not that it was very likely until after we crossed the border. It took quite some time to pass through Siltbelt since Raftalia was feeling the effects of motion sickness. Philo wanted to go extremely fast again, but now Fumi threatened to control her meal portions if she didn't slow down. Raftalia was very thankful, doing her best to keep her stomach from releasing her breakfast. Master look. Philo sees a big gate. Philo announced. Raftalia opened the flap that separated the carriage from the driver's seat. That must be the border. Raftalia said. Now Fumi hummed in agreement. You're right. Hopefully we have a straight shot to this Reichnot guy's place. He said, before his gaze sharpened. We might find some of your friends at that rabier guy's mansion. Raftalia took shaky breaths. I, for their sake, I hope they aren't. He's a terrible, horrible man. Then we'll save whoever we can and get out. If we're lucky, we can sneak in and sneak out without even being seen. You have your first hiding, remember? I asked. Yes. She nodded. Raftalia seemed distracted and I can understand that. Philo was busy humming to herself as she pulled the carriage. Aka's asleep and Ranga just walked silently. I had never seen the Philoleal so happy, so I figured that Philoleal has deep connection with carriage is true after all. Philoleals have a deep connection to carriages that borders on obsession. If a Philoleal goes too long without pulling a carriage, it will actually go through a withdrawal of sorts. I thought, sometimes animals has weird obsessions, just like humans. We passed under the gates of the border after showing our trader pass. Looking at the map that Werner give, we discuss our next move. Okay, so we need to keep heading west. With the path we're on right now, we should pass by the capital along the way. But I don't think we should stop there. I explained. Why not? Raftalia asked. Shouldn't we go visit Mr. Inhard at his shop? I don't think it will be a good idea, Miss Raftalia. Ake said. We don't want Sir Naofumi got summoned to the royal court for something he didn't do. That's right. Naofumi chided in. Raftalia sweat dropped. That's fair. We do have enough supplies for a week or two, so there's no reason to stop for that. Master. Mistress. There's people in the road. Ranga said, grabbing our attentions. Like Ranga said, there were easily a hundred people standing in our way. Some wore priest robes while others wore armor that made them look like knights. Halt. Shield demon. A soldier in front who looked like he was in charge stepped forward. Oh great another fanatic's crap. I thought sarcastically. Why always us who had to deal with this? Master RRR. Should Philo stoop? Now Fumi sighed. I already know how this is going to go just from the words. Shield demon. But sure. I'd rather they didn't try to break our carriage as soon as we got it. And here I was hoping to avoid the king's lackeys for a while. So you finally return, demon. You may have escaped judgment once, but you shall not do so twice. The knight shouted. We've been looking all over for you for a whole week. A whole week. So they must have been planning to attack us at the border the first time. Now Fumi said, ignoring the man who began shouting obscenities at them. They don't look very strong, though. I bet we could just charge right through if we tried. Do you think that's a good idea? They sound like they'll keep chasing us if we don't deal with this now. Ake chuckled awkwardly. 
I guess you're right. I sighed. Come on Ranga. Ake. Let's leave the carriage here and see if we can't deal with this quickly. Now Fumi, Raftalia, Philo, take care of the carriage and the egg. Just in case if some of the knights tried to ambush us from behind. I hopped off the carriage as Ake and Ranga followed. I already gave him his armor and swords, so he ready to kicking ass again. Ha. You three cannot beat a hundred of us, Katana demon. Take this. Taste the wrath of God. The air rumbled as the priests began chanting. Wasting no time, we decide to charge. Earthquake. Ake hit the ground with his swords, making the ground split as the knights and priests lost their balanced and falling. They failed to release their attack, which means they meet their deaths. Ranga dashed and slash half number of the knights and priests with incredible speed, killing them instantly. The remain of them, I'll deal with it. Meet your doom, assholes. I coldly said as the knights and priests got cut one by one by me. The remain 50 of them, is dead in 20 seconds. Now Fumi looked at me in amazement. Holy. Shit. He mumbled. I knew she's strong, but this is ridiculous. It's a hundred of them and with only Rimuru, Ranga and Ake, they take them down in minute. Now Fumi. Come take a look at this. I called him. He walked over as I nudged and priest corpse with my foot. Do you think what I think? He nodded grimly. Yeah. The three heroes church. So they're the ones behind all of this. I sighed, flicking my katana to remove the blood from the blade before sheathing it back at my side. I hope this doesn't mean the king is after us again. Raftalia said. If they are, then that's another reason to avoid the capital. Now Fumi said. Before we move, better we get rid of these corpses. Ake suggested. Good idea. We burn down the corpse using my dark flame before continue the journey to our next destination. I kill 50 peoples today, but with the experience of kill monsters in wave, it's not as bad as people think. I never regret this.